Basketball Talk Pro. Before we get into the subject that I want to talk to you about today, uh, I'd like to just remind you that I have put together a, what I call a practice manual, for want of a better term. Um, but uh, it's about 30 pages long, and it describes in detail, from planning right to the end of practice, one practice, one two-hour uh, practice. Of course, it won't take two hours in the in the manual, but um, it goes through everything, and it's the first practice of the season, so that uh, you get a lot of explanation uh, during the presentation. Uh, you're welcome to it; it's free. Uh, I would like your your um, comments on it. If you would email them back to me, I'd rather not have them. Uh, you know, publicly over the the uh, our program, but uh, privately, I'd like to get them. Make sure I know your. If you want it, all you got to do is email me and give me your email address, just to make sure that I have it. Well, today uh, I have a very, uh, I think, interesting and valuable uh, subject that. These are, you know, I try to give you things that you can use. This is definitely something that uh, you can use and you should use. Uh, it'll help your success. Uh, actually, I came upon it by accident. It, it was two paragraphs in a book I was reading. It really uh, was not the centerpiece of the book. Uh, the book was really about some other things and all of a sudden these two paragraphs popped up and it just hit me uh, like uh, it was just perfect for coaches and I know what they're saying works yeah, it'll work for you it'll work for anybody it'll work for anything you're doing uh, but uh, I want you to give it a lot of attention because the wording is because of the type of book it is, came from, it's a little bit um, uh, different. You've got to you got to pay attention, <coughs> and I will help you with that. We're going to put it uh, on the screen, so you can copy it down, and get back to it, pause it, stop it, <coughs> and I will make some uh, suggestions uh, during that uh, screen. So let's take a look at it, and then we'll talk some more. Well, this statement, I think, has a real strong meaning for coaches and uh, a concept that I think you need to uh, understand clearly could be very powerful. I call it the power of two. But I, I prefer to read it to you as you read it because uh, for some of you, um, the spoken word is easier to understand and some of you the written word is easier for you to understand that's one reason I want to read it the second reason is that um, there are some words here that you would very easily um, have a different meaning for than the author I read the book so you know th those words had already come up and been explained and everything so I'll explain them briefly to you so let me start now and I'll stop on the particular words first sentence says it all as powerfully as anybody could say it two minds with one intent become so strong that what they will becomes the will of God for minds can only join in truth. What he's saying there is the truth of the intention. They otherwise are not joined. In dreams, no two can share the same intent. What he means by dreams, and this is the word, uh, what he means by dreams is each person sees uh, the outcome, but he sees it in the light of himself. 
uh, being he will get the credit. The other person sees the same thing thinking he's going to get uh, the credit. So let me go on. To each, the hero of the dream is different. The outcome wanted, not the same for both. Loser and gainer merely shift about in changing patterns as the ratio of gain to loss and loss to gain takes on a different aspect or another form. Yet compromise alone a dream can bring. Kind of an awkward sentence. What he is saying, if you compromise on that intent, a dream can be brought uh, to bear. Sometimes it takes the form of a union, this dream, but only the form. The meaning must escape the dream, for compromising is the goal of dreaming. Minds cannot unite in dreams. They merely bargain. And what bargain can give them the peace of God? Illusions come to take his place, and what he means is lost to sleeping minds, intent on compromise, each to his gain and to another's loss. Well, this is a very, to me, I it came out of the blue when I was reading this book. It just I didn't even expect anything like this to come, but it just uh, struck me as being so strong. Uh, and I want to share some other thoughts with with you on that. Um, but uh, I wanted to give you time to see it in writing. And you can always come back to this, as I've pointed out many times, and write it out exactly uh, like I have it. Maybe you can take a picture. I, I, I don't know all of those things, um, but it's there. Uh, for you. So now let me uh, talk to you through the camera a little. Well, that's the, the concept. And it's a very strong concept. Basically, uh, the key to it is that both people uh, have the same intent and honest intent. Uh, intent meaning they both want the same thing. He uses the word truth, that the only way two minds can come together and uh, in a, in a one, per, one way intent is truth. There is no uh, there's nothing else connected with truth. It's either true or it's not true. So when it's true, the intent is true, then they're both by the same, they both have the same mind. And that provides a very powerful one, uh, one mind. But add one person to that too. And you probably are going to have one person that isn't uh, isn't as true and doesn't and has a different reason for wanting the, uh, the the thing to take place. Most of the time, probably 100 percent of the time, uh, when people see something, they see it how it affects them. It's going to make them better or make them look bad. Uh, it's an it's a, uh, ego type of uh, evaluation. So the more people you add to a group trying to come up with a solution, trying to come up with uh, something that they can accomplish, uh, the more people you add, the more problems you're going to have. I do not believe in committee meetings. I don't even believe in three or four people at a meeting. Uh, I, I prefer just, uh, I mean, when you're talking about taking on something to accomplish something, uh, there's going to be too many minds in there that have a different look at things. And they're all looking at how, how does it affect me. You know, will I look good? 
boy, will I get credit for this? You know, all, all those things are going through their mind. And that takes away from it. But let's just think about this a minute. Uh, think of two people. The twos. I can think of a number of them. You can probably think of more. How about Phil Jackson and Tex, Tex Winter? just happens I know both of those people. So I know what their intent was. Their intent was truth. They wanted the same thing. They didn't always get along. Uh, they're, you know, they had their arguments, their little spats and stuff. But they could always come together in a passionate path because they wanted the same thing and they didn't care who got the credit between the two. Jerry Sloan and Phil Johnson. I know them too. Uh, and I can tell you, I've sat and listened to some spats between those two. But when it came to what they were trying to achieve with their team, they were like one person. You better never try to uh, say something bad about the other one, because you weren't going to last long. Uh, the Wilbur Brothers. And they invented a plane, or not a plane, but they gave us the concept for flying, uh, which is, think of what our world has, what that did to our world. And yet they had no uh, money, they had no contacts. Uh, they had one thing, both of them wanted to get something that would fly, and they did it. And that changed the, the world. Bill Gates and Alan started out, they went to school together, uh, they learned computering together by themselves, and then built a monster company uh, together. Uh, always clearly focused on that one intent. Wooden, Buffett, I'm sorry, Wood Buffett, and this was a strange combination. Buffett and Nell, I mean, Wooden and Nell, Nell's his wife. But if you read that book I've asked you to read, you'll see how, how much of a factor she was in his success. I doubt seriously that John Wooden could have done the things he did without Nell. Um, uh, you know, it's a different, a little bit different in talking about some of these people and then a wife. But there's a lot of man-wife combinations that get together and have one intent and can make a lot of things happen. But there's a lot of others. Stop, stop and think of yourself. Have you ever been in a situation, I have a number of times, that me and one other person really thought we wanted this one thing. And generally we got it. In fact, I can't think of a time we failed. It's the strongest kind of communion uh, that you can have. Uh, but you probably have had the same feeling yourself. If you think back, if something has happened, maybe it is your wife, maybe it's an assistant, maybe it's uh, just a person that wants to help you. Um, things happen, good things uh, happen. Um, and I'm sure we're talking about people you know but there's a ton of people that are running businesses and doing things uh, that uh, aren't in the, in the uh, uh, limelight, so to speak. Combine yourself, think about this. And after you think about it, then take action on it. Combine yourself with one other person that wants to do exactly what you want to do. Both of you working towards the same goal, committing yourself to each other. You will not fail unless one of you goes off track and start thinking about himself. It's hard to find that person. I've been fortunate. I've had some assistants that fit that bill perfectly. I could not have had the success I had without them. And uh, keep it to one, unless you're really sure of adding one more.
you're adding another ego. Remember that. Well, that's it for today. Hope you keep this in mind. Not only keep it in mind, I'll put it into action.